What's up guys and welcome back to another twin motion video. In this video we're going to look at opacity maps. What are those and everything about them, how they work and everything. So before we get into it, if at any point in this video you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button. Also consider subscribing, that does help me quite a lot and I really appreciate it. Okay, opacity maps. Well first of all, those became new and accessible to us as of twin motion 2023.1. Yes. It's very exciting. We did cover that a bit in that actual new update video, but this video will cover everything with the opacity maps and specifically what they are, and what they do. Well, first of all, what are they? Well, they are, if you want to basically cut out a portion of the material, it's kind of as, as simple as that. Opacity can work between zero and hundred, but um, most of what I've used it for is to create some sort of a cutout, basically a, a fence or some kind of perforated material that's really uh, valuable to be able to do that. And why can we do that? Well, because uh, all of the materials within Twin Motion now are PBR materials or physically based rendered materials. And that means that every part of a, of a material has it is controlled by a map, a texture, whatever you want to call it. And at the end of the day, those drive certain features that the material displays basically they those all those maps together create the material and the way it looks so in this case the opacity map is going to create that cut out look and so we're going to deal with mainly uh, truly cutting things out uh, because a lot of times we, we need to make some sort of a perforated panel or a fence or anything like that uh, and it's really easy to do that now this is nothing new when it comes to the the world of materials because pbr materials have existed for a long time it's just a matter of we can do this in Twin Motion now, and it is, it's very simple, and it's really as simple as it should be, given what we can do. Okay, so I'm going to make just a basic box, a basic wall, um, just so we can start to apply some materials and see what we're working with. Okay, so there it is, and first of all, we need to apply material, and I'm, it, it does not matter at this point, but I'll go ahead and pick a metal. Uh, this matte chrome looks really great. That looks good. I I'm not going to do anything else at this point except show you where this opacity map is. And you can find it here within the color, More. And there's Use Mask here. Uh, we're going to click More again, and we can see opacity map is off. And by off, it's it's not even using this generic map. If we were to open this generic map, my guess is that it's solid white or black or whatever. It doesn't matter. But at this point, it is off. And if we turn it on, nothing happens again because it is a generic map and there's nothing there to really show or add value to the material. Okay, with that said, what are we really looking for here? Well, uh, it is very simple. We're looking for either a black or a white texture or a map to apply and replace this opacity map with because, and that's probably something that you've either found on the internet, made yourself, whatever it might be, uh, because you you probably want a specific cutout pattern. And so I went ahead and downloaded a few and we can look at them here. So the, the key thing here is, I know this, this one's crazy, we'll get here in a second, but this one, this one is pretty generic and it looks like a, you know, probably a fence you've looked at. It, it's perforated, it's, it's not perfect, but a few things that if you're either downloading these or making these that you need to be aware of and that you need to look for and make sure you add to these maps. It is very simple, but make sure that they're seamless. And that means that just whenever you tile these together, it looks like it's all one piece and you don't see specific tiles. We've covered that in lots of different material videos in the past. Um, but besides that, we need to make sure it's fully black and white. And obviously we haven't done that yet, but uh, I'll give you a tool that you can use to check whether this is seamless or not. We can come up and with, I just have one layer again, I just downloaded this online. You can come up here to, with the layer selected, you can go to filter and then other, and then offset. And we can choose to offset this however many pixels we want. I'm gonna choose, I don't know, 400. And we can see with this preview, as I shift this, I don't lose, I don't see any tiles, I don't see any endpoints. Um, I'll put the horizontal to zero and change the vertical to 400, for example, and we can see, you know, this looks pretty good as I uncheck the preview. I'm not really seeing any tiles. So this tells me it is seamless. I'm good to go. And wherever I put that offset in the end wouldn't necessarily matter. I, I'm going to put it back to zero so I feel good about it. Um, but finally, we do need to make this a black and white material. And, you know, it's very simple to do. 
we can go up to image adjustments and then black and white. I don't need to do anything else here except press OK and then there we have it, a black and white photo. Now, um, because the cutout works in values between black and white, 0 to 100, it's very important to make sure these areas that we want completely cut out are completely white or completely black. Now, for the sake of this, I'm going to leave this as, you know, you can see some of the change or some of those crosshatch are not fully white, not fully black. Uh, that's fine. And I'll show you what the effect is on the material. And we're going to come over here. And again, we're going to check the exact same thing with the filter other and then offset just to make sure this is a seamless material. We would check maybe again, 400. Um, the preview, yeah, that looks pretty good. 200, yep. 100 here. Yeah, so I'm seeing no tiles. Like This is a really wacky looking material, um, but it will work. It really will. And you can see once we get into Twimbo, so again, file image. I don't necessarily need to do this if it is black and white already, but just to be sure it is actually black and white, it is now black and white. <laughs> I have made it black and white. Okay, so we're going to take these two and maybe apply them to different materials and uh, really work with the opacity options that we have within each individual material within Twinmotion. So I will see you back in Twinmotion in just a second. All right, we are back here in Twinmotion. And really, all we need to do is take this opacity map, click this here, and I'm going to, instead of copy it, paste it, uh, open it, whatever. I, I'm actually just going to replace this. And so how would I do that? Well, we're going to go and click open. And open is basically replace. I wish it would uh, actually say replace or something else that would give you the indication that you're going to replace it or that you're going to open a new material. So I'm going to navigate to that material and we can go from there. Okay. And you can see I have all my maps here. I've got, of course, the originals I downloaded and then the ones that we really care about here. I, I've just named them based on the, the type of that they are and then underscore OPC for opacity. It's kind of up to you. I like to do that because there's there can be so many different maps for specific materials, especially if you're making your own custom materials. So let's take this crosshatch and I'm just going to open this. And immediately nothing happens, obviously, and that is because this opacity map is off. So let's go ahead and turn this on and see what happens. So when I turn this on, it in fact goes away. But does it really go away? Let's come in here and see. Ooh, look at this. So look at that. That I mean, is that not exactly what we wanted? That really is. It looks like a fence. And of course, it's quite small. Um, this is probably where my biggest issue with opacity maps in Twin Motion come into play. And what is that really? Well, that is everything to do with the scale. And so the scale, yes, that that is um, it is something to always worry about because, you know, a lot of times if you're using a specific material, you really want a scale that is accurate. You want to know the scale. You, you know, if you're talking about a brick, you're probably using a specific brick that has a specific size. And if that's the case, you need it to look and appear and actually you know, work with your model in twin motion scale wise, like the way you expect it to be. So the same applies here. So how do we control the scale with it? Well, this is where my biggest issue with it, and we could because we can't really. If we come back here and we look at scale, like first of all, there's no way to know what the scale really is, and then you you're based off a scale of 1.00. And I mean, you can get a little more specific with it, whether you want to stretch it or just move it, but that doesn't change anything. It's still all about the scale. But the nice thing, I mean, I guess the nice thing is that if you want to change the scale at this point, then you can simply change the scale. Obviously, you want to, it will change the scale of the opacity map as well. We can see, yes, it impacts it all the same. And so, yes, you can do that all that you want. Now, again, the issue I have with that is that we still don't really know what these dimensions are. Let, let's say I knew what the dimensions were in Photoshop and I, I did that specifically. Well, I don't know. There's not a great way to do it other than to literally use the measure tool into a motion and get pretty close, which to you can totally do all that. And you know, it might require you going back into Photoshop, maybe doubling or half sizing the image or just changing the scale of that opacity map to make it look better at the right scale, that kind of thing. So you're going to have to tweak some things, but nonetheless, what we've shown you is that you can add that. Okay. We're not quite done with this. We can look at this a bit more. We can come back here into the Chrome, go to more in the color and then mask. Now, before we go there, we could simply turn this off. We press off. Well, we're going to get back to our regular material that we that we originally placed on there because 
the opacity map was off to begin with. And if we turn the mask off, well, it's it's all off, of course. OK, and so we can come in here and there's nothing else to do here except invert it. Now, why would you want to invert it? Well, if you literally want the inverse and a lot of times I forget what is actually being cut out in this case, it's most definitely black that is getting cut out and that is just by default white will be left basically white is what you'll see black it will go away assuming you haven't inverted anything but let's say for example you forgot that or you just un, you know you naturally inverted it uh, in photoshop or you downloaded it and what it doesn't matter but you can always in quickly invert it here and we get the exact inverse this is awesome and you can see there's even some some of that gradient that we we saw uh, even in the Photoshop file, it's really nice and it's quite easy to do. So again, if we come back to the scale, this is going to dr be drastically affected by the scale. And it's nice because if we really need it to be a different scale, it, we can totally do that. So bringing it up here just so we can see it a little better, that's great. Now, one more thing, and this is not so much an opacity thing, but if I come in here, like I'm inside the cube, there's nothing, there's nothing to see here uh, until we come in here to settings and we turn two sided to on. And I love doing this for opacity materials, like materials that really do take advantage of opacity maps or that I need to see through some sort of a perforation. This really matters a lot. And I do this a lot with glass too. Um, we'll save that for a different video, but this is really powerful. Okay. So this looks good. Again, let's come back in here and invert this back to just the fence. So, so now it literally looks like a fence here. And then I, when I move outside, it, still looks like a fence. Imagine that. that. That's really, really nice. And it's the type of thing you would expect. Now, unfortunately, it is very flat looking and it's it's really hard to get away from that um, just because we don't have any normal maps or anything specific applied to this. Uh, and it just happens to be a really flat looking material in of itself. But that's okay. You can get around that with a uh, a material that has more dimensionality and then boosting uh, the normal map and we can do that within the settings here and normal. Yeah, it's already boosted all the way, but just know this is basically a flat finished metal. So it, it at the end of the day, wouldn't change all that much. Anyways, uh, we can turn this parallax on, but again, this is not really going to do much either other than barely change anything. So really not worth messing with there. So that's great. Uh, one more thing I want to do is just end up copying this thing. And I know this is, it's hard to see because of the scale, but let's go ahead and copy this. And I want to do the other material or the other opacity map, because we want to have a, a nice comparison. Now let's go ahead and take this, let's say silver here. And I want to actually change the color and darken this up a bit. Um, not quite natural looking silver, but nonetheless, it's, it's <laughs> darker. It's a bit different. Okay. So now we're going to come in here to color and then mask. See the mask is on. There's a generic map here and let's go ahead and turn this on and change this to our other pattern here. And that's going to be the squares and make sure that is the, cropped file and everything overrided the way you need it to be. And then look at this, like, wow, this is super interesting. It, it totally works. And look at this. Um, I'm getting this clipping on the ground because I'm literally on the ground and I'm singly single plane here, plane on plane. Uh, let's see if making this two sided helps. Nope. It does not because it's already two sided. So what I like to do here is just move this up by 0 0.0001, like anything to get it off the ground. And so ta-da, we're good there. So that's nice. But yeah, you can look, you can see it works all the same. Again, it's going to respond to the scale all the same. <laughs> this pattern is obviously completely ridiculous and nothing like this would ever work, but it would work and would have a chance to work <laughs> if we invert this. So come back to mask here and then er, invert it. And now is that not the coolest thing? This is a super cool fence or perforated panel or whatever it might be, you know, whatever. An example of the reflection is nice. It, this is really good. This is the type of thing that you would like to be able to create in twin motion and that we now can with the opacity map, really great stuff. And we can even see it reflect here in the preview. Really nice to see. Cool. Okay. So one final thing I'm going to do is because we're happy with this, it looks really good. I'm going to copy this over one more time and show you an example that exists within twin motion already that has an opacity map that is currently being used. And an, another one here, I, I love this material is just this perforated honeycomb. And if I add this here, we can see, look, there's this honeycomb is already there. Okay. And well, let's inspect this and make sure let's see what it is. Well, we can come in here to the mask. You see it's on, so that's good. And then look, we have a, just a generic map. 
Now, if we turn this on, then we get something different, which means that this map, if we were to inspect it, it would be a bit different. So that's something to be aware of too. So this map is not driving this perforation. But what is, in fact, is if we look at this texture, we could see it's, I know it's really hard to see in the video, but it is truly black and white. And because of that, just having the mask on or off, the fact we have a mask on and we use black and white as the actual base color map as opposed to the opacity map means that just turning the mask on is going to take out all of those black portions there. And that's totally why we see it. Now watch if I come in here and invert it. Well, the exact same thing happened. And that's, that's kind of what we expected. That is exactly what we expected. So you can decide to do that if you want, but just know that it doesn't necessarily have to be a part of this opacity map, because if we look at this, I mean, there's nothing here. Even if we default this to empty, it doesn't change it at all. And that's simply because of how this map works and the fact that we have the mask on. Okay. And then one final thing I have done a video on glass before on the specifically new glass within twin motion, but we can do this exact same thing with glass. And in fact, in some ways, twin motion has already done this for us. If we come out here, we can see all these different cutouts and this is a great example because if I look at this cutout, we could see, yep, it's very hard to see because <laughs> it's perfect squares. Uh, but if we come over here and see, yeah, this is, this is exactly what we expect. I, my guess is if we come into the opacity map here, opacity and then more, we can see that, yep, the mask is on. If we turn it off, yep, we can't see through it anymore. But if we come in here to more, we could see, look, that is the map. That is it. It is it's just a square. And that's repeated an infinite number of times. But we also have the option of inverting this. So just like that, we have our perforated panel or fence or whatever. And it's a glass material. So you have a lot of control. And the cool thing about glass now, because it is completely consistent, we can add this ridiculous looking glass and just add that exact same opacity map or really any opacity map that we want to. And once we add this map, you can see there it is. We just need to turn this on and look, it even works like this. It's, it's that simple. We can invert this. And <laughs> I mean, obviously this looks completely ridiculous because it's this ridiculous orange tinted glass, uh, but it works all the same. So you, you can see the, the vast options that we have with all of our different cutouts. And it's really cool that we have this as an option now because you can do this with any type of material. And a lot of times you'll need it with a specific type of material. What this does. And once, once I really discovered cutout materials or opacity maps uh, for PBR based materials is it, it means that I don't have to, if, if I have a perforated wall, I don't have to model the wall and model all the perforations, all the cutouts within Revit or any other program that takes so much time. Just imagine running any one of those operations in Rhino. If you've done it before, you know what I'm talking about. It takes so long to cut these pieces out. And if you can achieve that through a material, then I mean, what's not the love at that point that it's perfect. It's done. It's easy. And I would totally recommend it. So that is going to do it for this video. We looked at all the different cutout uh, opacity maps, applying different ones and things that you need to know about creating and watching out for when it comes to the scale, things like that. Uh, just play with that make sure you get it right. Uh, but, you have so much more control than you used to now that we have this map within twin motion. It's fantastic. So if you happen to learn something, please demolish that like button it really helps me out quite a lot. Also consider subscribing. That does as well. I will see you in the next video. Have a wonderful day and thank you very much for watching.